Kelly McCrimmon defends VGK against criticism that he and the team have exploited the LTIR system. Find out what McCrimmon said in Canada Radio, of course, not in Vegas, on Canada Radio. Next, right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first choice, your first listen each and every day. You can find us wherever you get your podcast, and please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that is Locked On Golden Knights. We are brought to you today by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. You can get up to $100 match play on your first deposit by using the promo code LOCKEDONNHL. Chris, Kelly McCrimmon, VGK made man and general manager appearing on the Jeff Merrick show on Monday, where of course in Canada, not in the U S not in Vegas and McCrimmon saying that the LTIR rules have been collectively bargained a player that suffers an injury, a significant injury. Uh, you can replace that player. And he said, well, he let us know about more, information about the Shea Theodore injury, uh, which I did not know. Well, Shea Theodore, he was out for 38 games with a with surgery on his back. Okay, so he slips up there. He's telling us now about injuries where they try to conceal those. And then, you know, he just talked about um, all of the insinuations that these injuries are not significant He cited the Mark Stone injury of last year, the surgery on his back, and then this year, the lacerated spleen. Same thing. We've heard this before. Google lacerated spleen, and you could tell it is a significant injury, and a player is going to be back. It's going to take a while. Said it is ridiculous to even suggest that these weren't significant injuries or aren't significant injuries. And furthermore, he said, the NHL polices all of these injuries, all of this. He said rules are rules. NHL watches very carefully. So why does he have to defend himself against two? I don't know if it's fans? about defending himself. And to be fair, I didn't listen to the show, so I don't know. I did. Where this came from. So how was, how was this asked? I mean, was it... Hey, he just asked how him, do you said, res- yeah, yeah, how do you respond to this? You know, the okay. criticism and insinuations that you are definitely bending the rules of LTIR. And then he jumps into it. And that was his response right there. The fair question that fan bases can react to is okay, Google, let's tear this, let's tear into the statement a little bit here. Google lacerated spleen, see if you can figure it out. Okay, fine. Jason Witten missed two weeks in the NFL when he had a lacerated spleen. But there's many different grades, I think, when I when I Google it like everybody else did. It can be a matter of weeks to a matter of months to even half of a year, depending on the severity and the grade. And what is a spleen? I don't know what a spleen does, but whatever. Um, but point being is that the concern is, okay, the goal lights, he's out for the regular season. End of story. End of season. He's out for the regular. God, you got the shakes. You got your your camera's going there all over the place today, Tony. I was just drawing your pictures. Bouncing. You're bouncing, nice on a napkin. Um, no, it's a napkin. No, so <laughs> where I'm going good? with this right now, it's it's perfect. Where I'm going with this Bruce right Cassidy now is in reverse. Yeah, there, I was in instead reverse, of yeah. reverse. I like side that. to side. Okay. The concern is the Golden Knights are sitting here and saying he's gone for the regular season. Fine. They're not saying anything about the playoffs. So they know beyond the shadow of a doubt, what do we have? 39 more days of the regular season, something like that. I don't got my calendar, but call it 35 days between now and the end of the regular season. We know he's gone for the regular season. If he does come popping back game one of the playoffs, or even better yet, he's in a red non-contact jersey down the stretch while the team finishes the regular season, I get the concerns. I do 
I'm not saying the goalie is doing anything wrong, but I understand the optics of what is happening. McCrimmon made a good point about last season, claiming that with the acquisitions they made, it still fell if you were to factor in Mark Stone's contract. I guess they had $9 million last year I wasn't aware of. but I was way, not what... aware of that either. What? I, okay, again, he said Stone out last year. They picked up Barbashev, Quick, and Bluger. And he said we probably could have acquired all three without Mark Stone's LTIR. That couldn't be further from the truth. That's not true. They just had. They were. How would they have nine million hanging around? They. They. I don't think they did. But no. I'm gonna before I just sit here and say I disagree. I want to look at this a little bit more because McCrimmon's not going to go on Canadian radio, Tony. That's for you. McCrimmon's not going to go on a Canadian radio show or a Canadian podcast and make a statement like that if it wasn't, in fact, true to whatever degree that's being pitched. So I'll, I'm not going to get into that too much, but I understand the concern that other teams are bringing up and other fan, I don't know teams, other fan bases. And like McCrimmon said, this is part of the collective bargaining agreements. I think I saw somewhere on X, so it must be true that 30 of the 32 league's general managers were in form in sorry we're we're in agreements in unison if you will to have the LTR rules LTIR rules work like this and then to go away the salary cap goes away come playoff time the GMs want their stars on the ice the NHL also wants their stars on the ice so when people want to keep pointing their fingers saying Vegas is up to things and whatever whatever it may have you it's all within the rules that all these GMs agreed with. And the last thing I'll say here is that the NHL, like you said, Tony, and like Kelly said, they police all of this. There's medical records. It would be a pretty big, I mean, this is Vegas, anything's possible, I guess, but this would be a pretty crazy scenario where if the Golden Knights faked medical records on a day where Mark Stone just happens to, you know, take a big hit, you know, collision, whatever it was in that game, whenever that was a long time ago. Like it's just, it's just ridiculous to suggest this, but I am curious how Kelly is making the comment about last season that they had all this money to make these trades. I'm not sure where that came from. I don't know where that came from. And that's why I was again, red flags. Uh, and he said the flip side is that they had this year, nine and a half million dollars would expect us to do just sit on that we're doing our job of course because there were opportunities so that i get as far as last year and saying that vgk still could have made those moves even though even without stone on ltir i don't really know if i understand that completely no i'm, I'm with you i was trying to pull up the i don't know if cap friendly like pulls up like they're 20 okay so 22 23 this looks like lines here so it doesn't so, okay. show Argument it doesn't say, break it down the same way so, it breaks down like so quick was wanna... about five million right barbershop about two million bluger about two million just for argument's sake yeah you're on the, you're on to something so far okay so that's about nine million and yeah no they did not have the money there i i don't think that that's true but in any event uh, I just don't understand why he felt like he needed to defend this. Like, I don't know what that's going to do for the good of the brand, for the good of VGK. I don't, I, I don't think he needed to go on Canadian radio and start spouting off about this is undue criticism against the LTIR. Just do your thing, be your made man, and do your job, and then everything else falls into place. I mean, he wasn't coming on this show, I can assure you that. But, I mean, and the brand will get me started on that one, too. But, no, going back to why, there's one thing I can tell you about this organization. when Organization, when people, please. Organization, pause. Um, one thing I can tell you about the Golden Knights is when they're speaking, more or less McPhee and McCrimmon, even Foley, but definitely McPhee and McCrimmon, when they're speaking, it's for a purpose. It's... They're saying what they're saying to get something out there in the universe. And I'm not saying anything is bad about that by any means. Don't don't read the, don't read into this the wrong way. But Are you at some that point, it's a continuation of media manipulation. I mean, sure, that, to that's, some degree, right? It's it's a no. It's definitely fair to some degree, a hundred thousand um, percent. Okay, but in the same breath, 
I think there was just a lot of heat, and I think McCrimmon is also probably just sick of it, honestly. I mean, but who, where's listen, the heat coming from? Is it from media people? It, like, you only have to worry about it if it's coming from the and, NHL. And from the Vegas media, I can tell you if that it's much, coming but... from <laughs> If it's coming from other GMs and other teams and what have you, I think that's when maybe there's a lot of red flags, and maybe it's like, okay, let's just try to clear the air. But did he really clear the air? No. No, that what could that's he have said that would have Stone from last year. That doesn't make any thing sense. That... And then why would he tell us on Canadian radio about Shea Theodore's back surgeries, which no one even knew about? The Shea Theodore thing is a is a question, and it's good information. I mean, hey, it's information. People like to know what's going on with the players and stuff. They have their connections and everything, so I'm okay with that. Where's the heat coming from? And to be fair, there's no reason for the Vegas media to question any of this. But outside of Vegas, there's tons of questions being asked right now. And at oh, some point, you probably fans. just get sick and tired of it. It's mostly by fans. Tired. It's by fans, though. Why should you be concerned yeah, about it's also what fans fair. Are I don't think there's maybe the Oilers because they were they were screaming, you know, they were crying foul last year. So mostly the Oilers and the Jets cried foul about the Golden Knights salary cap issues, which is why Friedman reported that the NHL did investigate the Golden Knights to a degree and everything was above the table, and that was the end of it right there. So Kelly's probably just sick of it, honestly, or maybe Bill Foley is sick of it. But you know, you asked your question, what 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 changes now that they go out there and make this grand, bold statement? The answer is absolutely nothing. I think more eyeballs around the organization. It's 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 gasoline on the fire is what it is. Right. It's, it's more gasoline on the fire. And maybe there's heat from the NHL, Tony. Maybe the NHL is poking around right now. Maybe the NHL, you know, requested an X-ray of Mark Stone's spleen and they want to see how severely lacerated it is. I don't know what the heck's going on. No, I think that the, throwing, they're, they're going to investigate the anything. Right the investigation has to be Cassidy and Bill Foley posing with their rings at the gala. I mean, there should be an investigation launched because, well, at least now Cassidy knows he knows where his BLT is BLT because now he gets an extra year by doing that, by posing. I said, I said, I would, you, want, you want to go down another route really fast. I said on Saturday at the game that if the Golden Knights were to miss the playoffs, it could still happen. I don't think it's going to happen, but if the Golden Knights miss the playoffs this year, Cassidy comes into the 24-25 season on the hot seat. And people mm. wanted to argue that point with me. That that was the funniest thing. Coming up next, we've got a four-point divisional game that awaits VGK in Seattle coming up on Tuesday night against a very stingy crack in defense. We'll bring you up to date next. Stay with us and stay away, Chris. Right after this, on Lockdown Golden Knights. We're brought to you today by the Daily Fantasy hockey app called sleeper the daily official fantasy app of the locked on nhl network sleepers are number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with sleeper you definitely can win a hundred times your cash daily fantasy hockey contest what players would you take this week to win a hundred times your money and fans can also play daily fantasy nfl nba major league baseball college football much much more in sleeper and all you need to do, you can connect with fans, and entries can be made in up to one minute. It's about it, or under a minute at times. And you just need to figure out who will record more or less, more than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, for saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. Jack Eichel, by the way, in that uh, last game, a plus four against Detroit. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard us, VGK fans. You can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks today so that you can start winning big. Use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you will get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Again, terms and conditions do apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use. Welcome back on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen every day. On Fridays, we've got the feature called WTF, What the Friday. Um, today, over at the Mountain West Conference Tournament, and someone accused me 
of being sounding like an, uh, sounding like a vampire on this on this podcast. So that was a nice compliment. But at least they're tuning in. So thank you for that. And uh, of course, on Fridays, WTF Saturdays. Are you sucking Chris, the life out of the Chris. show. Are you sucking the life out of the show? <laughs> Chris and Chris show. Well, maybe because we are vampires and we're recording at night. So maybe that's what it means. Okay, I, so I say I'm in I'm in rare form. I uh, had a nice dinner, flaming fajitas, maybe a margarita. Oh, dude, I, I love I flaming populated. fajitas. Oh yeah, I gave some of my money away at the glorious downtown Water Street casinos, and I had some Baskin Robbins. So I'm I'm feeling feeling good right now. Feeling good. It's been a good night. Yeah, I told you my story. I definitely got. I was had by a three year old. Had by a three year old. Uh, Tony, my one of my friends, her daughter three-year-old tony can we get a strawberry milkshake yes i will buy you a strawberry milkshake holds my hand walk through the casino there i'm not going to tell you which one because i don't like people finding me where i'm at so we go and we get her this strawberry milkshake that was absolutely delicious if i must say and then she stops holding my hand and then when she goes home she tells her mom mom dasco was scary he was scaring me because he was staring at me. He, we were doing faces where we just like stare at each other with a three-year-old for crying out loud. And she narked me out to her mom. Okay. We've got an important Pacific division matchup coming up tonight, Tuesday night, recording on Monday night. This is Tuesday night against the Kraken. And uh, they trail VGK currently by eight points with one game in hand of the Pacific division. The teams have split the first two meetings of this season. VGK winning in the banner-raising ceremony, the home opener, we all recall, and then losing, playing the fish game. Uh, yeah, catch the fish. They should they should have those guys outside of the arena there. Uh, climate control or whatever that is, arena, cli- what's it called? Whatever. Climate plunge. plunge push, okay, right? climate plunge. Climate control arena, too. Uh, so they shut out VGK in the winter classic. Uh, many believe that the Kraken would have been in the race if not for that eight game slide that they had earlier this season, in the month of December. And since that time, the Kraken, Chris, have allowed just 2.26 goals per game over the past 34 games. Only the Panthers, the Jets, and the Hurricanes, all playoff teams, Chris. Have allowed fewer goals in that in that span. So over the past 34 games, only three other teams have allowed fewer goals: Panthers, Jets, and Hurricanes, which are real good teams. I'm concerned, you know, VGK, which again has failed to protect the puck, even in the victory against Detroit. We talked about that on yesterday's show. Had problems getting it into the offensive zone against Vancouver. How does VGK? play this patient game how do they beat a team that is structured that is disciplined and there's not going to be a ton of open ice at the climate control whatever arena and they'll throw the fish around they should throw the fish inside throw the fish on the ice like the octopus there at t-mobile the other night that's pretty good you like that picture for the header today that picture was um, awesome that's pretty good we, we get mccrimmon for today's header um so Looking at Seattle right now, I mean, honestly, all the things you said, very important, but this game is more about Vegas playing their game and getting to their game as early as possible. That's something else that we are hearing in these post in these post game press conferences, not just from uh, Cassidy, but from the players as well. Which team can find their game first and then how long can they do it for? Seattle has a good defensive structure. Their goaltending has been very solid. Uh, most likely going to be going up against a Joey Decord. Wonderful story. 41 games played already. So he's going to get over 50 starts by the time the dust settles. 919 save percentage, 246 goals against. So this is that rare spot where the goalies' save percentage and goals against are aligning. There's been other goalies that the save percentage is up there, but the goals against aren't, or the goals against looks, you know, it's kind of like some fool's gold where the goals against is low, but their save percentage is high. So this is not going to be easy for, you know, if the goalies can find a way to get four goals, it'd be absolutely wonderful. But this game really has 3-2 written all over it. So you have to assume it's going to be Aiden Hill in that again tonight. Um, 
Aiden Hill, Aiden Hill, Aiden Hill, and Logan Thompson has become the other, other, other guy as of late. And I get what they're what the Golden Knights are doing there. They really want to get Aiden Hill's repetition back. Aiden obviously was the goaltender that won the Stanley Cup and played pretty good in the playoffs last year, set the second best uh, record for second best save percentage in the history of the NHL playoffs. So Hill earned everything, and the Golden Knights are really banking on Hill to get back to that form because the faith isn't there in Logan Thompson to be the man if Aiden Hill's not going to be the man. Let's just call it what it is. I, I seem to think that LT is going to get the start. I do. Um, VGK won the opener of the season four to one, and uh, that was here in Vegas. And the Kraken won three to nothing, and that was outdoors, of course. And the January the first uh, meeting between these two teams, uh, goaltending has been. You kind of started to allude to this, but a little bit of a deeper dive. Uh, it's really been a key for Seattle, Chris. Uh, Joey Decord has really stepped up over the past twenty six games. Save percentage of 935. Jeez Louise. And Philip Grubauer, he returned from an injury a month ago, and he's five and one as he's played in seven games. And since he's returned, a 943 save percentage over seven games. I mean, they are playing out of their minds. And again, it's that structured game, it's a stingy game, like I said earlier. And for me, this really does concern me because VGK cannot protect the puck the way they're supposed to. And again, it's going to be tight checking. It's going to be hard to get into the offensive zone because Seattle just, again, they're going to play a really hard-nosed contest. And right now, they are fighting for their collective lives. And they could get it down to, it's a four-point game. They can get it down to six points. Or when VGK leaves town, it's a 10-point cushion. And then that's more breathing room for the Vegas Golden Knights. And, of course, the rigged schedule down the stretch. I don't. Okay, I'm not going to mention This that could end up, if the Kraken win this game, it could lead to them being only behind the Golden Knights by as little as four points because the Kraken have a game in hand right now against the Golden Knights. So there's a right. lot of ways to look at the importance of this game. And going back to Aiden Hill right now, he's 2-6 and six in his last eight games. <sighs> Save percentage, he's had two games where a save percentage has been north of 900. Otherwise, 885, 844, 844, 850, 897, 893, 857. Like, this is this is certainly a concern right now. And But I also feel like on the flip side, on the positive side, this game, March, March the 12th, feels like a new season also, right? Now the Golden Knights have had a couple of full practices with the new players in their spots. Plus, you have new. You have Brett Howden should be making his return uh, Tuesday against the Seattle Crack, and Will Carey supposedly is coming back Thursday against Cal da, 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 against the Calgary Flames. Um, Brendan Brisson most likely gets will play Tuesday, gets sent down on Thursday, and then now the clock is starting obviously on Tomas Hurdle. How soon can Hurdle make it into the lineup? It seems like he's two weeks from skating. That puts him at a pace of three to three and a half weeks. So I, I really think. April 1st, plus or minus, is where the Golden Knights are hoping Hurdle gets back in the lineup. So a, a lot to like about the Golden Knights situation right now, but there's also a lot that needs to be addressed. Puck management, you started the, this um, this segment about, about puck management hasn't improved. Turnovers haven't improved. But we also hear how often from Cassidy, the Golden Knights are not a perfect team. Their structure is pretty good. They're Goaltending is pretty good. Their defense is pretty good. When everything is clicking, it becomes pretty effing great. There you go, William Carlson. So it's about just everything kind of working together all in one for when the Golden Knights kind of do get everything going. So I think me and Chris talked about this on the Chris and Chris show. When do the Golden Knights, when do things turn around? We Neither one of us felt it was going to be against Detroit. And we were both right. Yes, the Golden Knights won that game, but I didn't feel like that was a turning point by any means. Chris said things get better next Tuesday against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I said things get better starting tonight, Tuesday, mm. against the Seattle Kraken. Okay, and uh, their GM, who I heard on Canadian radio too, Ron Francis, just kidding, JK, JK, um, made just a couple of trade deadline moves there. Nothing major, nothing really yeah. significant. They extended Jordan Everly for two more seasons because – Edmonton was really hot on their trail and uh, trying to poach him, if you will. 
And then uh, Alex Wenberg went uh, to the New York Rangers, the center, in exchange for a couple of draft choices. And uh, currently you've got Jared McCann, 51 points, Oliver Bjorkstrom with 45, and uh, Vince Dunn, last I saw, was out with an upper body injury. And so that's pretty much what they're looking at. But again, I don't think there's going to be a ton of open ice. This won't be like we saw against Detroit. Uh, VGK is going to have to be very careful with the, its entry passes and not, not getting sloppy and hanging out of the puck and winning the board battles, winning a lot of the puck battles in this game. It's going to come down to that. It really will. If it comes down to puck battles, that's not been the Golden Knights' strong point lately, so hopefully that can turn around. Um, interesting stretch coming up where the Golden Knights are – they're going to get some good a good dose of early playoff hockey right now because they're going against desperate teams who have to get points right now. That's why things like what's happening in Minnesota with the uh, the goalie getting pulled in rate in um in overtime, you know, and that just those desperate no- moments to get those points. So, Kraken Flames are still in the playoff hunt right now. They're ah, they be there in the end, but but as of today, they are still in the playoff hunt. Not they're only uh, they're eight points behind Vegas. Same amount of games played. So again, four point. Didn't game. Carolina just beat the snot out of them. I think they did. Yeah, but so day. what? I mean, I mean that, that doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, they got another matchup against the Kraken in uh, nine days. And yeah. Then the following week, you got the Blues. You got the Preds. Jets. Okay, fine. But then the Wild. So the Golden Knights, that's going to be a very fun stretch to see how the Golden Knights respond to the desperate teams. And then now going ahead to April, you got Vancouver again. You got Vancouver twice in an eight-day uh, window. Then the Oilers, then the Wild, Avalanche, Blackhawks, Ducks. So, I mean, you know, this Black easy Hawks schedule. And that Blackhawks and, and Ducks. Jeez. Besides okay. those two games, Tony, it's not we better easy get to right? If the Wild are still, we probably got to get out of here in a second. If the Wild are still there, watch out. So, okay, all right, now go to break. We'll be quick with locks. Don't worry. Okay, locks and the locks of the night and predictions come your way That's next. Nice. Locks and, yeah, right yeah, after this on Lockdown locks Golden Knights. Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what helps to keep your ride or die alive. That's right. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LEDs, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you are into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride each and every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. You're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. We are back on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much for being our first. You're, we're your first listen each and every day. Your team every day. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Lockdown Golden Knights. And so, Chris, uh, it's time for Locks of the Night and predictions oh no, it's I my started. turn okay, okay no, I'll, start. No, I'll, start. I'll go quick no, no, i'll, go, no, quick. No, I'll no. go quick go ahead dorothea and colasar has been around it lately coley has Oof. been around it so dorothy of colasar 3-2 golden knights not a pretty game but good outcome i'm gonna go with marcia so and i'm gonna go with petrangelo it's going to be a two to one kraken victory two to one they don't play very many of those games. What do you think we'll see? A five and a hook on this one? Yeah, probably. That seems pretty safe. I can give you the exact if you. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear. But you're this. probably this should be this should be five and a half. If it's six, it's going to be juiced. Five and a half equal on both sides. Six, it'll be juiced. Let's see. Okay, five and a half. Do we hear five and a half? Do we have five? Five and a half. Six. Or we six? hear six. Six. I Six, think that's an underplay. And if you want to go under, it's only minus 120. 
I think that's a good play, personally. What did you say your final score is? I'm I'm three two. You're two one. Yeah, I think it's under. We appreciate everyone tuning in. Thank you so much, especially our everydayers and the people that put up with our shenanigans each and every day. Fridays, it's WTF. What the Friday? What the stinking Friday? And, of course, on Saturdays, the YouTube exclusive that is Locked On Golden Knights, Chris and Chris Show. You don't want to miss that. And thanks so much for subscribing to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. For my man, Chris Golick, I am Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. We appreciate, we're the made man of Vegas right here. Um, we're the made I'm podcast. Made man. Man. I learned that. I learned no, that we're just the way. made uh, made podcast man. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Take care.